It was boredom at first sight You could hardly call him right He is no one's Mr. Right So what do I see in him? But then I'm not so ideal I'm not gentle or genteel So the question should be what do Oh, that was me. I was last up. Ah, well, we don't, you see. We leave it open because if we don't, it won't and we have to put Gerald through the window or, or take a run at it, which nearly caused an accident and... Who's done this? Me again. Like they say, last up lays the table. Like who says? Well, I thought everybody. Oh, my mother. You didn't bring her, did you? <laughs> no. So you don't lay the table the night before? The night before what? Well, the night before the next day. Well, aren't they all? What? What? Oh, it's like quiz night with Amnesiacs Anonymous. But you're having a lion. What with this racket? Shush. What's going on? He shut the door. So she's at the club. Shush, everybody. That's it. Well done. <laughs> Nutcrackers. Nutcrackers. Hey? Nutcrackers. Nutcrackers. Fish slice. Fish slice. Fish slice. <laughs> No crackers, no crackers. <laughs> you see, the problem is there are too many people in this house. Gerald, you're going to be late for school. <laughs> Rick, would you mind getting the milk off the step? Don't you look it out. This house is amazing. What does he mean? Maybe he's not seen nutcrackers before. Yeah, but even if that's true, he'll still have to go. I mean, I'm not saying he's not nice, but this is only a little house and he is very tall. You just have to have the ceilings lifted. Look, Brenda, you may not have noticed, but I am trying in my own gentle way to reduce the number of people living here to something nearer. One. No! <laughs> well, yes, you see, first your father left, then Pam left, then you left, and then your nan left, and then Gerald left, and... I only went to school. Yeah, but you came back. <laughs> And then you came back and you Just two pints, but I've changed the order to three as from tomorrow. Oh, you shouldn't have bothered. Go on, you grab that then. Good girl. <sighs> Coffee? Oh, yes, please. Then get it yourself. Oh, I see. Still in the mood, are we? Me, David? Why should I be in a mood? What does it matter that my husband's just spent a fortune on his latest fad? And I'm left to scrape by on the pittance he allows me for the feeding and the clothing of his children and the maintenance of this mausoleum. They are your children too, you know. I know. Which is why they're so lovely. Oh. <laughs> Why, you, Sarah's little tantrum in the sandpit yesterday did confirm that you are definitely the father. Play that tantrums? You don't play in sandpits either, but you do play with bloody boats. I'm never going to get through to you, am I, Pamela? The boat is not a toy, it's a tax-efficient ancillary. A what? I can entertain clients on it. Oh, what you do? The hornpipe. <laughs> because I use it in relation to my business, it becomes a part allowable expense. And having slave labour in the home isn't. All right. I give in. What? You can have her help. I want to live in Nanny. All right. If you can find someone who's prepared to live here with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what were you going to say? I've forgotten. <laughs> Look, you've got what you want. Now will you pour my coffee? Please. You'd already decided, hadn't you? Yeah. <laughs> then why do you do it? No, I don't know. I think I just like playing with fire. 
I'll tell you what, though. Tonight. Tonight. We'll eat early. Right. Then. Then. We'll go to something beginning with. B. Something <laughs> beginning with. B. <laughs> you give in. Don't I always? <laughs> the boat club. <laughs> the boat club. Yes, you like it. It's very smart and it's full of doctors, solicitors, businessmen, and their wives. And they've all got their own yachts, I suppose. Of course. And so have we. Mm -hmm. Ooh, doctors. Your favourite people. But won't they all be off sailing and all that business? Well, some might, occasionally. But most just prefer to sit around and talk about it. <laughs> mm. Wonderful view, isn't it? You take it for granted living here. Excuse me. You're making a big mistake, you know. Yes, so you've said. Malcolm, you're just not ready for the rough and tumble of the outside world. Mother, I've been married. I know all about tumbling. But you don't know much about the rough. Of course I do. Lived with Brenda for six months. What am I saying? That she's rough. She is a warm, caring and considerate person, just like a mother. That woman is a born-again fruitcake. She wants to believe that people have the right to live their own lives. And she always encourages her children to travel. I'm amazed they don't. Who'd want to live over there? What, what does that mean? Well, everybody knows what it's like. No, they don't. And nor do you. Happens to be a very nice place. Got some beautiful parks and some of the best buildings in Europe. I bet they were all stolen. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them. I noticed when those tall ships were leaving last year, a lot of them had sails missing. <laughs> they don't set full sail until they get out of the... What's the use? You're just prejudiced. I happen to like living over there. Malcolm, I don't deny there's some tolerable suburban parts, but how can you choose to live in... T oh. Go on. Liverpool 4 plus 4. <laughs> 4 plus... Why can't you just say it? Liverpool 8, Toxter. Shh! She's right as out there in her garden. So? I told her you were going abroad. Well, why lie? Wasn't such a big lie. I said you were taking up a missionary position. <laughs> oh, well, she laughed. Bye, Mrs. Riley. I'm going home. Yeah, to Toxton, oh. Liverpool 8. <laughs> what, yeah, oh, oh, yes, OK, ten minutes. What did she say? She said, would I mind giving her a lift? She visits her sister there every Thursday. <laughs> Yet. Yeah, just come back from your reflection. Well, if either of you want shoes with seconds in at the moment that are better than the first we had in two days ago, we were sold out in fours and fives before three. I don't need shoes. Then you're going to find that pavement awfully cold. And anyway, you don't know where you might decide to walk to or when. I don't need new shoes. Yes, well, that's just what I said. But I still had to buy some, didn't I? And they are crippling me. You see, I tried these on this morning. And then the rush came. And the next thing, Enid had sold mine to this woman with orange hair and an incontinent Pekingese. Brenda, what? The door's closed again. Oh, so it is. Oh, we'll have to go, you know. I mean, I did explain. Sure, she'll hear you. Yeah, well, you're going to have to tell him. No, mother, you're going to have to tell him because it's you who wants rid of him. Oh, don't say that. It's just that... But it's not just him. No, you want rid of all of us? No. Well, yes, eventually. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> say, Friday week. No, mother, you say it. You okay? I fixed it. Just needed a few thou off the end. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no need. <laughs> Just a loose wire. <laughs> Should I make some tea? Okay. <laughs> uh, Brenda said you wanted to work with me. Yes. What about? Oh. <laughs> now, I was in Gerald's room just now because I was doing the washing up and there seemed to be a shortage of cups. Hey, found 12. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, I think that room's next in line for decorating, because it's none of my business, but uh, if you need a hand... Malcolm. Have you forgotten? Mal... What you're going to say? <laughs> oh, tough day at work, right? <sighs> Spoon. Drink. Uh, that was next on the list. House Pamela, you'll hardly notice him. He'd be very quiet in your spare bedroom, and he is completely <laughs> house trained. Mother, we have a big house because we need a big house, and such spare rooms as we do have will shortly be occupied. One can't expect one's nanny to sleep in the airing cupboard. One's nanny? The children's. But one haven't got one yet. <laughs> so, we can kill two lodgers with one removal van. <laughs> He's marvellous with kids, and he's very handy. You'll never need to open cupboards with your nutcrackers. And you'll soon fix that cupboard of yours and the bath that squirts all over itself. It's a jacuzzi, Mother. <laughs> well, say the chain comes off David's bike and he's late for work. I don't have a oh, bike. Oh, she knows. Actually, he's quite a handy guy to have around the place. No. It's just a thought. David, leave the thinking to me. And, Mother, you haven't thought this through either, have you? Well, haven't I? Well, Malcolm coming in might be a good short-term solution, but what then? Brenda. Right. Brenda would follow. Smashing. I mean, good. I mean, would she? Well, that wouldn't work, would it? No. Why not? Brenda lived with us once before, remember? What was it like, David? It varied between horrendous and disastrous. But it's good to have a change. David and Brenda don't get on. If she came here, they'd row. Then I'd row with David. Malcolm and Brenda would move back in with you, and I'd follow with the kids. You wouldn't! <laughs> Inevitably. And what are you grinning at? Nothing. Oh, this will be them. Look, Joyce, if you want Malcolm to leave, all you've got to do is to tell him. He'll just have to find himself a flat. Flat, right. David! <laughs> yes? Will you tell him? No, no way. I'm sorry, I'm not getting involved, no. Hiya. Hi. Hiya. You're late. It wasn't my fault. It was Charlie Chisley here working overtime. Just earning me keep. Well, they're both fast asleep. Uh, pity. I was hoping to make a four up at bridge. <laughs> Malcolm's growing a sense of humour. <laughs> Come on, David. Uh, Bren, can you spare a sec? Yeah, what's up? Uh, is my labelling at the back? Yeah. Are you sure? Well, it was before. Now, Brenda, no, this will give her a chance to tell him. Tell her what? Um, I've got to mention it, Mum's here. Yeah, she's trying to persuade us to die. Oh, sorry, David. <laughs> uh, right, let's get cracking. We don't want to miss the boat. We're not going aboard tonight. Oh, joke, David, joke. Oh, you haven't gone yet. Then you won't mind giving me a lift down to James Street, will you? Hello, Brenda. He, he's through there having a twiddle with his little tester. Bye. <laughs> James Street Station will do, unless, of course, you're going over the water, in which case you can drop me at Mills, and even better, pick me up later as a sort of compensation for not helping out with our other problem. James Street. And it's nobody's problem but yours. Nah, nothing wrong with that. Mark? Yeah? What did she say to you? Your mother? No, the Virgin Mary. <laughs> Seems all right. What? Oh, I've got something to tell you. Have you? No, that's what she said. And? Let's see, she said she didn't think it was a good idea for me to be... And then she paused and said, standing over by that standard lamp. What? Well, she thought there might be a loose wire in it, it might be dangerous, so I said I'd check it, cos I always carry me pen torch and my mains tester, and she said she thought I probably did, and left. Coward. Well, you can't be too careful with electricity, Brent. No, she is. No, she's just being sensible. Malk, you can call me mother loads of things. Idiotic, devious, unintelligible, demented, but never sensible. Brent, I want to have words said against your mum. They were the good points. <laughs> no, nothing wrong with that. What? The plug. 
Hey, maybe she got mixed up. I'll check the other one. Mal, there's nothing wrong with any of the plugs. She just chickened out. What do you mean? Well, she was gonna tell you. No, why should I? Why should you what? Nothing. Let me tell you something, Brenda. You don't appreciate your mother. She's a lovely, caring person with a, a great sense of humour. If you had a mother like mine, you'd appreciate a mother like yours. No, she's a fruitcake. That's what my mother said. But you're both wrong. You just don't appreciate her. When's her birthday? We could take her out. She doesn't have birthdays anymore. Well, I'd like to do something really special for her. Something to make her eyes light up. Great. Well, when she gets in tonight, just shine that torch down her here. <laughs> Oh, this is a nice room. Have you had it long? It came with the house. <laughs> Have a seat. <laughs> you know, my husband always wanted to live over here. I'm not at all surprised. Sophie, he said, I've got to get away. I thought your name was Joyce. It is. Sophie was the one he went off with. <laughs> he forgot we had an extension phone in the bedroom. By the time he'd rung off, I'd packed his bags and stacked them in the hall. <laughs> Mrs. Wilson, I'm sure you didn't come here to give me details of your marital schisms. No, I don't think I did either. <laughs> well? Well. What do you want? Uh, well, tea if you're pouring it, but if you're going to press me into something alcoholic... Uh, anything, as long as it's a double. <laughs> tea! <sighs> oh my, that's a broad fitting. You know, this is only one down from orthopaedic. <laughs> Somebody. They're all the same, aren't they? One track minds. The only time they stop thinking about it is when they're doing it. <laughs> what did you say? Did your fella go off? I mean, they're always looking for a way out, aren't they? He died. Well, that's a bit extreme. <laughs> Mrs. Wilson, why are you here? Is it to do with Malcolm? Yes. Well, in a way it is. What sort of way? Well, uh, every way. You see, He's living in our house, which is already too small for all of us who were already there before him, and I really think he'd be a lot happier back home with his mother. And I'm sure he doesn't mean it when he says you're a nagging old goat. <laughs> he says what? Do you know, I'm starting to feel a bit peckish. It must be the sea air. Well, I'm certainly disinclined to proffer any olive branch after that. Though it is true the knowledge of his current environs leaves me fearful both for his health and his sanity. Unfortunately, the law, as it stands, allows offspring to make their own decisions at an arbitrary 18, without countenance the fact that some of them are incapable of reason, judgment, at double that age. Does, does that mean no? <laughs> it means, Mrs. Wilson. Oh, what's the use? You call me Joyce. Have some fruit cake. <laughs> it isn't too much like cannibalism. <laughs> We had a shot at the midnight last year. Pretty good. The main leg is nor'west, and with the prevailing wind being from the sou'west, it's a broad reach virtually all the way. Oh, you certainly nip along. <laughs> In fact, it got quite hairy at times. And uh, I must admit, I wasn't sorry to see morning or the Isle of Man. <laughs> Have you ever done it? Uh, the uh... Isle of Man. No, no, no. I've only sailed from cows. I have. We went a few years ago. Oh, yes. Rough? <laughs> Not a bit. Clean toilets and a full English breakfast. I meant the weather. The crossing. Oh, the boat trip. Well, yes, that was a bit blurry. And did you have the prevailing wind on your beam? <laughs> no. Did you have No, but Michelle's suit had a hood. <laughs> <laughs> Jolly good! <laughs> What a sense of humor. Yeah, actually, Pam hasn't done a great deal of sailing. Oh, I understand. My number one doesn't get in as much as she'd like. But it's kids, isn't it? Somebody has to feed and fit them out, and I'd be no good at that. <laughs> well, we'll be getting help soon, won't we, David? A living nanny. Uh, actually, Pam, would you like to take a seat by the window and enjoy the view? <laughs> <laughs> and how's business with you, Julian? Can't complain. This afternoon I had a couple of alleged wrongful dismissals and a male stripper claiming sexual harassment. Oh, you run a nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Pamela. 
With a bit of soliciting on the side, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's thanks to Julian that we got Esmeralda. Who? Our boat. <laughs> a little insolvency matter with a local builder. Desperate to get rid. It was a real bargain. And if you're not yet fixed up, I know of a good agency for au pairs, nannies, that sort of thing. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> well, perhaps we'll see you down here more regularly, Pamela. Sure you will, Julian. It's very nice, isn't it? Actually, I've been trying to persuade David to get one for yonks now. A nanny? No. A yacht. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's a nice lad, don't get me wrong. But you know how I feel about young people needing to get out of the nest and fly on their own two feet. Yes, well, I know it's difficult, but once you can do it, it's like riding a bike. <laughs> well, then our Brenda comes rolling back, and now a boyfriend. And his as a sidecar. <laughs> oh, yes, he did. I'm going to tell him tonight. Oh, I have. But all the other avenues were cul-de-sacs. <laughs> our Pam. His mother. I even tried the orphanage, but it was closed. <laughs> what, too old, you think? Yes. And him having a mother wouldn't have helped either. Um, see, my only other thought was the RSPCA. <laughs> Do they? After three weeks? <gasps> True. <laughs> and I suppose our Brenda would still be very cross, even if it was painless. <laughs> but here they are. It, look, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Hiya. Hi. Mm. Who's for supper? Me, please. Joyce? Oh, you mean a milky? Oh, no, thank you. Right. Have you said anything to him? No, we just pass notes to each other. <laughs> I mean about him not staying. No, Mother, do your own dirty work. It's not dirty, it's... Right. I will. Change your mind? No, you go ahead. Right. And two minutes each makes four. You fix that too? Just a fuse. Malcolm, I want a word. Have two if you want. <laughs> Stick to fuses. Uh, I've fixed your cupboard as well. Good. Malcolm. Joyce. You see, you're living here now. And I've tried Pam and your mother. And the orphanage is closed and the RSPCA only gave you three weeks, which would upset Brenda. But it's no good. I have just got to say it. Just a minute. Have a look. Hey, you'll lose that. Let's have it off. I'll tighten that glass box. Hey, it's a bit worn. Maybe someone will buy you a new one. In appreciation of your warmth and welcoming nature, eh? Let me tell you something. Sometimes children don't always appreciate the parents. It can take an outsider to see things. <laughs> I'm rambling, aren't I? Yes. <laughs> so, what was he going to say to me? Me? Well, there's just the two of us. <laughs> you see, Malcolm, in this house... Yes? The last one up doesn't have to lay the table, so you can do it every night. <laughs> Have I fallen in a spell? Does he drown me in Chanel? Is he vibrant? Is he out? So what do I see in him? Am I dazzled by style? Has he made my life worthwhile? Does he melt me with his smile? Don't make me laugh. 